Hello friends, welcome to Insert Saigon Initiative. Very unfortunately, we witnessed one of the major earthquake in Nepal. In today's video, we are going to discuss about Nepal earthquake and various information related to earthquake. So, before we discuss about earthquake in Nepal, first let us discuss about theme of the day. In today's theme of the day, we are going to discuss about international summit. When you are reading international summits as a part of IR or current affairs, you have to look at this particular information. First one is conducted or held by that means who are held I mean who which nation is hosting that summit and who are conducting that in a declaration adopted in that particular summit for example recently in G20 summit various declarations have been adopted then outcomes what are the outcomes of the summit especially outcomes are very related related in terms of environmental summits and WTO trade summits third one next one participating members whether India participated or not how many countries participated if it is related to g20 or g7 which nations participated and which are the observing nations and which are inviting i mean you know like which which countries are invited significant attached significance attached to that particular summits then location where that particular summit was held so this particular information we have to look then the sample questions related to summits first question consider the following statement the india africa summit two statements held in 2015 was the third such summit okay it was actually initiated by Jawaharlal Nehru no it was happened somewhere around in 2000s during the Atal Bihari Vajpayee time during that time it was held so the second statement is wrong the only one is the first one so this can be a model question now you will understand how the questions can be framed in terms of the international summits now let us see today's topic today's topic that is a Nepal earthquake it is related to in UPSC mains it is related to GS paper 3 disaster management and GS paper 1 geography in that important geophysical phenomena and such earthquakes. So this is the syllabus mapping and in today's video we are going to cover why it is in news. All of you know that it is very unfortunate incident and because of that even around I mean according to the present estimates around more than 150 members they lost their life. So because of that we are discussing why these kind of un unfortunate incidents are happening in Nepal and what about this disaster what is the earthquake meanwhile tell me students disaster management this disaster management comes under which ministry of the union government put your answer in comment section why does earthquake happens earthquake waves here we are going to discuss about the body waves and surface waves in body waves we will discuss about P waves and S waves then the surface waves we will discuss and apart from that we will also discuss about shadow zone and various angles related to shadow zone such as 105 to 145 and beyond 145 degrees we discuss about kinds of earthquakes such as you know man man human induced earthquakes tectonic plates earthquake and volcanic earthquakes as well then we discuss about distribution of the earthquake at the end of this video such as you know like Pacific ring of fire mid atlantic ridge so these are the various parts of the world where earthquakes are very frequently we can observe and finally we discuss about how these earthquakes can be measured in terms of Richter scales as well as Michaelis scale so this these are the various topics we are going to discuss in today's video now let us see where this earthquake was happened this earthquake was originated it was happened mainly in the west part of the Nepal that you have to understand in the district of Jumla okay this is the midwestern part of the Nepal you know that Nepal and India we are having the open borders and tell me students which paramilitary security force is securing the border between the India and Nepal what is the name of that then we'll see why it is in news earthquake almost a magnitude of 6.4 it struck the western Nepal on Friday which resulted to the death of more than 128 death according to this you know like report and it escalated to more than 150 according to officials estimates it is very unfortunate incident and if you remember when this kind of disasters are happening obviously that infrastructure also come into very very come into very you know like uh, very valid very significant so we have to build infrastructure which is resilient to this kind of disasters that is the reason india initiated one uh, initiative that is known as cdri coalition for disaster resilient infrastructure the, the headquarters is present in the gurugram apart from that india also uh, driving force behind certain other international initiatives such as international solar alliance as well as the one sun one world one grid so these are some of the initiatives proposed by india earthquake is all about shaking of the earth 
it is a natural event and very occasionally it is a man made event as well it is caused mainly due to the release of lot of energy from a particular point we will discuss about those points as well this energy will be generated in the forms of waves and these waves are known as seismic waves they travel through earth and when they reach to the surface of the earth the damage they causes that resulted to the earthquake related damage these waves intensity is recorded by seismographs of course the seismographs will have certain range of scale then that's the location below the earthquake you know in this diagram you can understand the at the location below the earthquake is known as focus and the exact location on the surface of the earth is known as epicenter these are the two names focus which is also known as hypocenter and epicenter all the natural earthquakes that takes place in lithosphere here you have to understand where is lithosphere present lithosphere is a layer of the earth which consists of the entire crust as well as the upper part of the mantle actually mantle is divided into two parts upper mantle as well as the lower mantle in this one you can easily see you know like this is a crust this is a mantle and core mantle divided into upper mantle lower mantle through asthenosphere the upper mantle as well as the crust together known as lithosphere earthquakes can happen only in the lithosphere not below the asthenosphere you know that asthenosphere is an area filled with a liquid that is known as magma when it comes to the surface of the earth it is known as lava in that process it also creates the volcanoes as well this earthquakes based on the tectonic plate movement it may be due to various reasons it may be due to the extension of tectonic plates or the transformation of the tectonic plates or the compression of the tectonic plates which is mainly one on another in all these situations energy will be released that energy will be released in the form of the body waves as well as the surface waves so the various layers of the earth here you can understand and earthquake waves like as mentioned earlier body waves surface waves these body waves they generate due to the release of energy at the focus that means exact below the point of the earthquake and it travels in all the directions they travel through the body of the earth that is the reason they are known as body waves so they interact with the solid I mean, surface rocks and they generate a new set of waves known as known as surface waves here you have to understand body waves are the primary waves okay because of those waves here surface waves are generating but the irony is surface waves cause more damage compared to the body waves now in the next few slides we are going to discuss about few body wave types in body waves also two types p waves s waves some body waves can travel through solids liquids and gases whereas some body waves they can travel only through solids we are trying to understand that particular information as well the surface waves surface waves they move along the surface and they travel through material with the different densities as the denser the material the velocity is the higher so that means they travel at higher velocities in solids and of course they change directions as they hit any particular surface they bounce back they reflected back and they change their direction as well now we will see types of body waves like i mentioned body waves are two types primary waves and second s waves here this primary waves this s waves they move very fast and they are the first one to reach the surface of the earth actually this particular area asked in previous year question as well they are similar to sound waves like sound travel through gases liquid and solid this is also can travel but here you have to understand these waves okay not only these any types of earthquake wave they do they won't travel through vacuum only light can travel through vacuum that you have to understand because they are having similarity with the sound waves you know that in sound waves particles they always vibrate in longitudinal manner rather than the transfers so here in the p waves particle vibrate in all the all the directions in the longitudinal manner similar to sound waves s waves they arrive after the p waves they only travel through solids through the study of s waves we can easily understand the interior of the earth as well these s waves they travel in perpendicular direction like a light wave as they are traveling through the light wave these particular s waves they have these ups and downs okay so these troughs and crest they they follow while they are propagating through the s surface and these are considered to be most damaging compared to the p waves now we will see the surface waves they are also known as l waves longitudinal waves they interact with the surface material and after they interact with the surface material from there onwards 
these waves will generate further waves they move along only through the surface they move with a very long wavelength that means the the distance between either the crest or the truss the trough the the distance is very long so there are the long wavelength and they are very low frequency but these are the waves they can travel through very long distance that is the reason these are the most destructive among the entire earthquake waves and they are very slow to move as well slow among all the earthquake waves because they move very slow they are the last waves to be recorded by the seismograph compared to the ps these are the surface waves they are going to be the last one will be recorded by the seismograph now we will see shadow zone you know even the seismograph sometimes it unable to record certain waves beyond a particular angles now we will see between the 105 wherever the earthquake generates from compared to that point between the 105 to 145 degrees okay in that particular wave the p waves cannot be recognized both you know like p waves and s s waves of course p and s they cannot be recognized beyond 145 only p waves can be recognized s waves cannot be recognized that means s waves almost all from the seismograph from wherever this earthquake originate from that in all the direction if you compare around 40 percentage of the s waves cannot be you know like identified the zone where these p waves as well as s waves which cannot be recorded there the, those zones are known as shadow zones the shadow zone generally like i said earlier between 105 to 145 from the epicenter in this particular area both p and s waves cannot be recognized beyond 145 s waves cannot be recognized only p waves can be recognized the shadow zone of the s wave is much larger compared to the p wave this you have to understand almost all 40 percentage of the earth surface cannot be recognized i mean is a shadow zone and for the s waves that means s waves cannot be recognized in this particular area now we'll see the kinds of earthquakes based on the reason of based on the reason earthquakes can be categorized into three ways tectonic earthquakes volcanic earthquakes and human induced earthquakes this human induced earthquake mainly due to it may be due to collapse of mines or it may be due to blast due to various reasons this human induced earthquake can be possible then distribution of earthquakes across the globe earthquakes uh, the you know like the areas where earthquakes very frequently happen these areas are distributed in various parts of the world that is pacific ring of fire alpine earthquake belt actually in this map if you look at alpine earthquake belt this alpine earthquake belt generally it starts in this java sumatra region it goes through himalayas through this it goes through further even through mediterranean sea mediterranean sea and it leads to the atlantic ocean this is one part and the second part is this mid atlantic ridge the second one and the third one is the pacific ring of fire if you look at this pacific ring of fire here you can understand from this diagram pacific ring of fire it extends from the pacific part of the ocean where i mean western part of the pacific ocean towards the eastern part of the pacific ocean this western part eastern part they also play very important role in the el nino la nina okay el nino is a time where this western part of the pacific ocean the temperature won't be that much because of that the rainfall will be shifted towards the uh, western american as well as the african part of the world now let's see the mid atlantic ridge the alpine earthquake belt and pacific ring of fire these are the major regions in this pacific ring of fire because of this because of the tectonic plate boundaries here not only the possibility of earthquake even the frequency of volcanic eruption is also very high because of that even lot of trench okay even the mariana trench also we can see in this particular region around 2/3 of the world's active volcanoes and 90% percentage of the earthquake across the globe they are occurs in this pacific ring of fire it present across various tectonic plates from the pacific plate to philippines plate so this is the ring of fire next measurement of the earthquake measurement earthquake can be measured in two ways either the damage it caused the second one is the energy released if you are measuring the energy released by the earthquake that will be the richter scale which measures the energy from the scale of 0 to 10 if you are measuring the damage it is causing that will be the mercalli scale it is from 1 to 12 so here based on the intensity or based on the magnitude we can classify the various part of the india in terms of the zones 
zone 5 is a very high risk zone the zone is uh, you know like liable to very high intensity earthquake waves so this is about the nepal earthquake and detailed information regarding the earthquakes now we will see mcq yesterday's video mcq consider the following statement about the green hydrogen regarding the green hydrogen green hydrogen is defined as hydrogen produced from biomass no the hydrogen will be produced from water through the electrolysis process so first statement is wrong the second one green hydrogen energy is vital for india to meet its nationally determined contribution yes of course through green hydrogen we can reduce the greenhouse gases emission and even it helps to reach our net carbon zero level by 2070 now we'll see today's video question in today's video which of the following statements are not correct read these four statements and pick the wrong one main's question what is an earthquake and what are the causes also discuss impact of earthquake along the challenges faced in pre disaster preparedness for earthquake so this, this is the question related to both geography and disaster management now as we reach to the end of this video in this video we discussed about nepal earthquake why this earthquake uh, you know like um, happens what are the reasons when this earthquake happens energy will be released in various waves we discussed about various waves how these waves will be recorded and earthquake frequency across the globe tectonic plate movements and how this uh, this uh, earthquake energy waves can be measured what are the two different types of scales and based on the earthquake magnitude what are the different zones in india so this is the detailed information regarding the earthquake in nepal thank you